Okay, really nice work. We have two more exercises left in lesson 13. So we're almost done with filters and the exercise is Aesop's Fables Part 1, okay? This webpage will be an interactive bookshelf that shows six of the morals from Aesop's Fables. I loved reading these stories in elementary school. If you have not read Aesop's Fables, I don't know if any school doesn't uh, assign these, but uh, they're great stories. Anyway, Aesop has many, many short fables made up stories that illustrate a particular moral. If you've never heard of Aesop's fables, you can learn more about them here. So there's a Wikipedia. Please check it out if you have not read or if you just forgot forgot these stories. They're really, really great. Okay, so our job is right now, all of the books look exactly the same. You should add image filters to each book to give each one a unique look. To create the filter rules, you should give each book an ID, then create a CSS rule for that ID. So here are the specs we need to implement. Other than adding the IDs, do not make any other changes to the HTML file. Every div with the class book must have a unique ID. Each ID you create must have a CSS rule for it in the style sheet that only includes a filter rule. And you must in use at least three different filters, hue rotation, blur, invert, brightness, etc. All right, so we covered all of these. We're gonna practice with them. Ooh, sorry about that. We covered all of these and we're gonna practice with them now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if I run this now, I can see, let's open this up in a new tab. Okay, so here's the book. Here are the books, three on each row. We're going to add a filter so when we um, look at them, they aren't all exactly the same. They're not going to be all gold spines. Okay, so over in the HTML, we need to assign an ID to each book. So let's make sure, let me make sure we're applying that to the div. So every div with the class book must have a unique ID. So we're applying the ID to the div. So here's the first one. Oh no, sorry. Don't, don't skip any of the books. We want to make sure we get them all. So here's the first book. It already has an ID. So we're going to just leave it at that. And it's basically based on the title I can see here. So the title is the Lark and our young one. So the ID is Lark. It's always a good idea to use IDs that are related to the content or the elements. So when you're looking at your style sheet, you know what, you know what that rule is about or what it's referring to. So for this one, I will use Nightingale for the ID. You can use whatever IDs you want because we weren't told to use specific ones. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna use Lion. Then for the next one, I will use, so this is the next row of books, Lioness. Okay, this one I will use the ID of boy. And then the last one we'll do an ID of donkey. Okay, so I got my six IDs. Now I can write my rules. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna open this. Okay, so we're going to put the IDs, I'm sorry, the rules here. So for each book, use the ID to create a CSS rule to apply the filter. So remember when you're writing a rule for an ID, it should be with the hashtag. Okay, so um, Nightingale, Lion, Lioness. Sorry, I didn't memorize these all. Nightingale. I'm gonna put in the selectors first and then I'll go in and apply the filters. Okay, and remember you want one for each book. So we're gonna have six rules and we only have to use a minimum of three filters. So we got lion, lioness, and then boy and donkey. So that should wrap up the selectors. Okay, so let's see what our options were one more time. Okay, so they are hue rotation, blur, invert, brightness. I'm just gonna use them in that order. Okay, just for demonstration purposes, but feel free to mix it up and use whatever ones you want to use. Okay, also don't forget that filter, there is a page that I did link and it's gonna be in the link below, but remember that there's a bunch of other ones that you can use and this uh, W3C CSS filter page has a bunch of options and also a 
nice neat table that describes what the filters do so feel free to experiment with any of these that we didn't cover as long as you get at least three from the list that we uh, did to do okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go back over here sorry I'm losing my spot okay so for filter let's go ahead and use hue rotation and hue rotation okay I'm gonna use my docs here going to look it up in the table hue rotation takes a degree amount of degrees remember it takes the pixel color and then it rotates at a certain amount of degrees whatever you specify so let's say 180 degrees and that will be for the lark id okay now for nightingale i'm going to apply the blur filter remember this one applies the blur effect to an image and the blur filter Okay, this one takes a value in pixels and in the default is zero. So the higher we go, the blurrier the photo is going to be. So let's say something around maybe 10 pixels. We'll blur it out to get a more dramatic effect at 10 pixels, hopefully. All right, next, uh, let's try to play with the invert. Okay, so the invert filter, this one takes a percentage okay so zero is the default a hundred percent will completely invert it this one was the one where we take red and transfer it to cyan we take green and transfer it to magenta and then we take blue and transfer it to yellow okay so we go from one color scale of red green blue to cyan magenta yellow okay and that's not really important for this all you want to know is just um, the percentage that you are inverting it so we'll do something like 0.5 just in the middle okay let's see what that looks like so far so I'm going to save this and refresh it all right so there we go oh it looks like 0.5 completely has this really odd effect let's see what's going on here filter 0.5 let me make sure we are applying that correctly. Let's see what the property. Okay, so it looks like it just takes a, let, let's see if we play with the percentage, if that will change it. So 0.5 should correspond to 50%, but let's see if we change that, we get a different result. Okay, so I don't think it was the decimal. It might just be because this is a flat color and it's just one shade of green or olive or whatever this looks like to you. And uh, this is the result. If you're not feeling it, just try another filter. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is try something from the list of filters here that we did not get to play around with. So sepia, another uh, really popular filter. It's on a lot of image editing apps and platforms so this takes a percentage zero being the default a hundred percent will make it completely sepia let's play around with this okay so let's do that for the lioness of filter sepia and we'll do it at like 0.7 okay let's see what that does i know the color is really close to what we're going for already but just experimenting here right so get this beige kind of cappuccino color all right i'm gonna stop here for the purposes of this demonstration you're applying at least three filters from the list and the exercise here so you don't have to use anything that's not here i'm just encouraging that because there's so many options and image editing is something that we all you know can use and, and it's totally practical and functional and just and just fun all right nice job guys we have one more exercise part two of aesop's fables and that wraps up lesson 13 okay so we're almost there keep it up